Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. Um, I'm back today with that tutorial that I said I would show on um, these beads that I was working on, these cabochons that I was working on. I did do a matching focal bead and a matching just unusual shaped bead in every one of the colors that I did. I just made enough to do three different uh, pieces. The colored one here is done with uh, the Adirondack alcohol ink. And I only have three of the actual colors. I have all four of the mixatives, um, the copper, the gold, the silver, and the pearl. But I only have three of the colors. I have the current meadow and slate package. And I'm not sure which one that's called. Nature Walk, maybe. I'm not sure. So these are the pieces that I worked on. Let's see if I can get just you can see all the glitter and sparkle. Alright. As I also mentioned, I had some clay ordered. This is the regular Sculpey 3, which um, is considered a craft clay, I guess. Um, I have no problems with it. I rarely use clay straight. I almost always mix it or paint it or so I rarely use it straight out of the package so I don't have a problem with it being just a craft clay this however is the Primo Accents transparent clay and you can see very clearly there is a vast difference now I didn't order the Primo Accents it actually comes in a transparent white uh, but I've seen some reviews that uh, really don't show enough of a difference to me for it to be worth uh, trying to find and I did have a little trouble finding even this but luckily I found it at a supplier that's out of Texas so I literally ordered it one evening Thursday evening Friday morning got an email that it had been shipped Saturday morning it was in my mailbox you can't beat that like I've said before when the craft store is 70 miles one way um, the amount it costs for shipping is <laughs> minimal <laughs> compared to the hassle of me actually having to drive there so as you can see the Sculpey 3 is much whiter and much less even transparent raw in the package it actually has a very similar look to the white um, if, it, if I don't have it in the package, still in the wrapping, um, I have a hard time telling the difference. The transparent, however, obviously has a totally different look. It does look transparent even in the package. And uh, a very definite, distinct color that, that you would be able to pick out easily. My problem, and I did not contact the manufacturer but before um, the manufacturer the shipper but before I order again I will ask her how fresh it feels before she ships it because this being Texas it by noon is uh, you know normally near a hundred this this year you know it's 95 so sitting any time at all in my mailbox totally uh, hardens the clay not hardened to the point of not being able to use it, but it's darn close. And I'm going to show you an example of that. This is a piece that I conditioned last night. And I have probably run it through 20 times on my pasta machine. And when I first cut a piece off, there is no, um, there's no amount of hand strength that I could have that would be able to condition this clay. Uh, I can barely roll it with my hand roller, with my cook roller. So, um, like I said, before I order from them again, I'll ask her to check. I'll ask her to check how uh, fresh the clay feels, so that way I'll know if I need to order it earlier in the year, so to speak, which is probably going to be the case. So, today we're going to work with The alcohol inks 
and this shaped glitter and this fake snow this like I said, I, uh, Buffalo Snow was the tutorial that I had seen long ago that uh, you used to make the fake opals, and I couldn't find Buffalo Snow. And when I saw this at my dollar store, uh, that looked so much like it, I, I snagged a couple of bags of it. So, you may have trouble finding this, and of course you can use plain glitters just as easily. I have many, many beads in my bead box that are just regular glitters, and I've also got these, um, let's see if I've got room to pull them out. These Martha Stewart, it's the leaf glitters, and these things are fantastic. They bake wonderfully, uh, seem to be perfectly heat resistant. Um, I don't have any problems with them at all, so I really like these, and these are readily available. I, these just came from Michaels. So, like I said before, I've used the uh, the little balls, even that come from well, not this one in particular. Uh, this is what I call a craft glitter. Uh, glitter like your kids used when they were in school, like you used when you were in school. A chunky, a chunky glitter, uh, and these work. These work all right. Sometimes, depending on the glitter itself, it'll do what I call porcupine. It'll it'll stick out of the bead after it's baked. If you turn it on its side, it looks like a little porcupine. Little bits of glitter pooched up out of the out of the clay, but that's easily sanded off. But here's just some of the varieties of glitters that. Um, that I work with and don't have any problem with. These are the little packs of glitter that just come from Walmart. And I actually love these. They come with the holographic finish. And those look really cool. Um, these, I believe, came from Michaels. And I'm sorry, I couldn't tell you what the brand is right now. They come in little multi-packs where there's usually a couple of stacks. Uh, I believe this also came from Michaels. This Poly Flake glitters. I've used that. And then these uh, art art uh, art accents. I ordered these a couple of years ago um, from an online store, and these work really well. And they also make um, yeah micro beads. That also I've used in the clays in them, on them, on altered dominoes, on all kinds of things. So there's just a rundown on glitters before before we get started. I'm going to pause real quick and roll out another piece of that, the Sculpey 3. Alright, I have these two rolled out on my thinnest setting on my pasta machine, on my clay rolling machine. <laughs> Because this one actually is a um, made for rolling out clay. And it was like, um, I want to say it was $24, $25 at Michael's. And of course I just used my coupon, so it's not too bad. And if you're going to do a lot of clay, it's definitely worth the, worth the investment. Even if you just use it for conditioning. You can see the difference and how they come out very clearly. You can actually see my hand through this clay. You can see my fingers through it. This piece not so much. Alright, but the reason I'm doing this today with the uh, Sculpey 3 is because that Primo Accents is so brittle. So to show you the technique, I'm going to use this much, much softer clay. And all I did was take my alcohol ink on a piece of, this is actually that 
similar to the magic eraser <laughs> and this just came from the dollar store and I just cut it up into chunks it's like the dollar store version so I took that and a little bit of regular alcohol from the store and I put the alcohol on my sponge at first and I squished my sponge before I flipped the alcohol over I didn't want the sponge full of alcohol. I just wanted a little on the surface if that makes sense. And I'll show you what I mean. I squished the sponge hard before I flip it over so that it doesn't have a chance to soak the whole sponge with alcohol. It's just a little on the surface there. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to drop just a couple of drops of the ink. I gotta open it one handed. And then I'm just going to give it a little color. And it doesn't need to be anything, even if you don't want, it can be as blotchy, as solid, as whatever as you want. Basically, that's that. Now, just give it a few uh, seconds, you know, a minute or two to dry. Because the alcohol will affect how the clay bakes if the alcohol is not evaporated off. We learned this the hard way. In the first video. So let the alcohol evaporate off. Alright, I'm going to do that and be right back. It really only takes a minute or two. Okay, when you get up in the morning and you know you should probably start over. I know this piece looks different. Um, somehow the whole tutorial part of the tutorial wound up missing. So, even though I didn't need three more green beads, I'm going to try this again. Okay, and the way I got this a little bit more mottled look is I dripped some drips of the alcohol ink on the clay dry and then used my sponge with a little alcohol in it and sponged it around and then before it dried I dropped a few more drops on there so now that it's all dry let's see what we can come up with this time instead of whatever I did last time which at this point I can't even tell you <laughs> is I'm going to use two of these Martha Stewart leaf glitters. I've got the, let's see. If I could read it. Oh, the Vertilite. And then this one is Olivine. So let's go with a little bit of the lighter. And depending on the softness of your clay, this this uh, Sculpey 3 is pretty soft. Um, you can use a little bit more glitter. If your clay is dry like that Pardo, not that Pardo, it should start over. Like the Primo, Pardo is another brand of clay that is made by Viva. And uh, it's hard to come by in my, well, it's really hard to come by just about anywhere. Um, but it's supposed to compare with the, the Primo is supposed to compare in transparency to the Pardo from what I've seen. <coughs> so, messily, <laughs> I'm going to sprinkle on just a little bit of that Buffalo Snow because it does have a great iridescence to it. I like the look of so and I'm sorry this part's gonna be a hot mess because it's way earlier in the morning than it was last time last part so this will go back again to what I filmed before I don't know what happened to this missing bit I can't find it anywhere like as if I never even filmed it so which I know I did because I did some really pretty stuff <laughs> some pretty silly stuff so I know I filmed it I was laughing at myself 
All right, and then we're just going to start from one edge. And it's just from the way I roll my clay that I wind up with the straight edge on one side. Um, if you want a straight edge, just cut your edge off if it's not. It does make the rolling just a little bit easier. It's The hardest thing is to start. And especially when you're trying to hold the camera. So, once you get... If I was using the Primo accents, this would be breaking every time I try to roll it. It's that brittle. Normally it wouldn't be. And that's why I stressed in, in one of the other videos how important it is to stand there when you're buying clay and try to get the softest batch you can get your hands on for this kind of for this kind of work. If you're sculpting per se, um, a drier clay is not so bad. But when you're doing something like this, it can really be a nightmare to try to deal with. It like I said comes out with some gorgeous beads. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna story to you. I'm gonna show you a little preview of ones that I haven't baked. These are actually with that Primo accents. And with as hard as it is to work with, the beads come out gorgeous. And I'm going to come back with an update and share with you how I did these and some of the baked ones. So, I won't be giving that away yet. We'll, I'll try to come back and show you what those look like. Okay, so here we are. We've got our, we've got our enchilada roll here. That's what I called it in the other one. Roll it up like an enchilada. And then what I normally do is... Um, I will cut it in half, or, you know, almost cut it in half, and then, oh, cut that time. And then I will stack them together, like that. Mash the seams a little bit. And because this clay is so much softer, the glitter is encased in there very easily. The harder clay, the Primo clay, when I folded it in half like that, I had to take my clay roller and mash it as flat as I could get it and roll it back out just a little bit to make sure all those glitter pieces were embedded in the clay. Because if I wouldn't have done that and I tried to just mush it into a ball, it would it would crumble, which it you know, which it did do. Uh, even doing it that way, you get a little bit of cracking still. But I mashed it flat, and then I, I sort of rolled it. This, uh, however, is so smooth and so soft to be almost, a you know, it's a little firmer than dough. So, for this technique, that really is what you want. That really works well. The drier clay, now if I tried to roll it like this while it was still that dry, it would, um, the glitter would start to separate from the clay and it would just kind of flake apart. I've got one little spot right here that's trying to do that, but I can remedy that fairly easy. What happens is it'll create a hollow pocket in your roll and then start to flake from there until basically you have a crumbly mess. And if you can hear that, where it clicks, that means it's not really round and I'll have to find the spot there. Round it out a bit. Alright. So there we've got our incorporated glitter and alcohol ink. And here's how I got the three stones. I just Separated me off some bits. There is the focal bead, the smaller piece. This will probably be the cabochon, the next little bit bigger piece. And then this will be the specialty bead, as I'm going to call it. So, <clears throat> we'll start with this one. Because I think everything after me rolling this focal bead was still there. I mean, this uh, regular bead was still there. So we're going to set those two pieces aside. And what I do is, like I've said this before, I'm going to set this down and see if I can do any 
doing good here. It's just like when you're a kid. I'm going to put it in my palms and I'm going to roll it. To a ball. And as you can see, luckily, I got the same problem that I showed on the other, the rest of the video. So I'm going to stop here. Is this little um, piece of glitter in there that's not completely covered. It's not completely sticking out, but it's not completely covered. So what I will do is I'll take my hat pin and I'll mash that down in there a little bit and then roll it again. That just makes your same problem here. That makes your sanding a little bit easier. Alright, so here's what I've come up with. Now one of the things you don't really want but you can't avoid, and I'm probably not going to fix it on this one because it's only this one little piece, you try to avoid having your glitter protrude out. And as you can see on this one, it's not protruding out. It's just held down by the clay, barely on the edges. And um, I would prefer it not to be like that because I'll either have to sand past that or I'll have to hope to not release one of the edges when I'm sanding because uh, if I do it, it's kind of hard to fix. So what I can do at this point, focus down here on what I'm doing, is I can take that hat pin and I can press this piece further down into the clay and then manipulate that just a bit let's see I got a star doing the same thing there there we go now they're no longer sticking up out of there like that and all I have to do is roll this in my hand again to smooth it back out and then I'll be right back all right that's the look we're going for. So when we bake this, all of the surface will turn transparent. So you'll be able to see the glitter that's just below the surface of the piece. So I'm not sure. I'm doubting. <laughs> Okay, and what, do you want, what you want to do when you're going to ream the hole, as you can see, the bead is not on there straight. But I've got it centered, basically, on the end. So what I'll do, as I'm pushing the, p the pin through, is I'll turn it just like this, and keep that in the center. Every once in a while, I'll turn it and look from the end, and see if I think I've got it going through there straight. Now, because this has glitter in it, though, it can be a little more difficult to push the pin through. So uh, sometimes I'll, I'll have to wiggle it around to get past or through a piece of glitter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ream this hole through here. See if I can. <laughs> and spinning it, turning it, will just help your eye see that that line of your pin going through the bead and then from the end you can see I'm pretty much in the center of my bead. Now what I'll do is let's see what I do. can this be harder to show? I'll put this where it rests between two of my fingers and roll it to widen that hole out a bit and then I'll push my hat pin up there and barely push in on the end of it so it gives you a nice clean hole. Then I'll turn it around, go from the other side, and do the same thing. So there we go. Almost like a pretty little olive. That's what my husband would say. <laughs> like an olive. So, there is that. And for the technique, that's it. In my oven, I've showed before, I've got a Pyrex dish with a layer of polyfill, um, like you would stuff in a doll or a pillow. And the polyfill will cushion the bead without sticking to it, so that you don't get a flat or a shiny spot on your bead. When you bake, 
a cabochon on a tile or anything, it'll have a flat, shiny bottom. Like that. So that's why the beads go cushioned on the polyfill. And of course, when I bake these in that Pyrex dish, uh, four of them will fit in a nice little circle there. I don't let the edges touch. I don't want to superheat the edges uh, of the tiles. And I put a sheet of wax paper that I've used over and over and over again um, on, on top of the Pyrex dish. And it's just a flat, uh, like a 9 inch square casserole dish. You can bake on a cookie sheet. You can bake um, on a piece of foil. You can bake on a piece of parchment paper. Um, you don't want to bake on wood um, or anything like that. So, um, and, and nothing porous, of course, because you won't be able to get it back off. <laughs> so this is the piece, like I said, I'll use for the cabochon. Um, I would have to put you on the tripod and show you that but here normally what I'll do is just like this I start with a little, little smoother ball Let's see if I can smooth it out <laughs> all right okay here's what I'd start with just a just a marble you know ball rolled in my hand just like I did the other one and then I would take a clean towel <laughs> And the way I clean my tiles in between is I just scrape them with a razor blade and it comes right clean. No fuss, no muss. Clean your hands in between with baby wipes. Alright, what I'll start doing is mashing this into a nice circle. And I'll continue to go around and lower the edges of the cabochon. So that I get a rough... A lot of people use molds, and I, why I have not ever used a mold, I like the randomness of the way they come out. No two are the same size, no, you know, that kind of, that kind of deal. And then my handy dandy cabochon helper. Teaspoon. And, uh, oh, mm, the difficulties of working wrong-handed. Backhanded. <laughs> not wrong-handed. I'll go around the piece and just, and all I'm doing right now is kind of tapering the edge. And the, as overcomplicated as this looks right now, when you're not holding your camera, it's really easy. Alright, then what I would do is go around with my teaspoon and just help to round the edge out back the way it should be where you've mashed it out with your thumb and as you can see or with your teaspoon now it's got a sort of there we go even dome around the top. I've got a little peak right here I'll have to work with. But The next thing is I'll go around with my mm -hmm, block and true up the edge a little bit and helps it smooth off the top just a little bit. And then I'll just finish it out again with my thumb because everything fingerprints, anything like that, you'll sand off when you're sanding and buffing. It's the whiteness. <laughs> it's the whiteness of this streak right here that's fooling my eye into thinking that it's got a dip there. Which it doesn't. Alright. And as you can see, that, that was holding the camera with the other with the other hand. So it's pretty easy to get a good dome shape, even just doing it by hand. And of course there's molds you can buy and stuff to make cabochons. Or you could obviously make one and then make your own mold. So, um, I'm going to put these in the oven after I get enough for to load, to load my oven because I like to have it full when I'm working. 
but I thought I would show you what I did yesterday. Let's see. With some of these shaped glitters. This is the Primo Transparent. This was the first piece I did using this. And this piece was done with... Uh, give me a second because they come out so different after they're baked from before. This must be the copper... Wow. Okay, this must be the foil... It's pretty bad. You don't even know what it was. I did some of this variegated red leaf. It's like uh, gold foil, but it's variegated. So I did that on a piece, which is not that piece. But I was at the dollar store one day. <laughs> When I saw these in the kids section package, okay, sorry about that. The stuff from the dollar store, and it is it was from the kids section, and it came with um like double adhesive shapes, if that makes sense. And you're supposed to put this foil stuff on top, and then rub it so that it sticks to the adhesive side, you know, the adhesive back, and then you peel it off, you know, where it peels the foil off the little mylar sheet. I have gotten it to work with some of the polymer clays. The transparent, however, doesn't seem to be sticky enough for it to stick to on its own. So what I did was I hit it really quick with my heat gun <laughs> on the dull side and then slapped it down on the clay, burnished it really, really good, and then peeled it off. And I won't say it came out perfectly. It didn't come out near as well as this, and I think this was on black. I think I did this on a sheet of black. And why it came off a lot better than the, believe it or not, this was red. So, and as you can see, this is the flower-shaped glitter. It's really pretty. So I did three of those. The strange-shaped one is this. And the package directions on transparent clay say 275 for uh, 15 minutes is what it usually says for per quarter inch thickness. Yeah. So it says. But what I do is um, I bake them for that for that time, and then right before my timer shuts off, or right after, while the oven's still hot, I give it another ten minutes at three hundred before I plunge it into the cold water. And that really seems to help with the transparency a lot. And this is actually one of my favorite pieces that I did yesterday really came out nice. So there's that with the, with, that's the only one I did with these this time. I did one with the foil, the gold foil, and there are videos um, showing how to do different techniques with the gold leaf. These absolutely, I so wish I could zoom in and still be clear. They just come out gorgeous and I really like that variegated gold leaf it really turned out nice beautiful bead that'll be a gorgeous focal bead and then there's the cabochon Ooh, is that pretty these are with the alcohol inks the alcohol ink mixes if I can get it out and believe it or not this one is the copper with the snowflakes let me look. Yeah, I think that's just the snowflakes. The cabochon and the bead. 
that's with the copper. This, weirdly enough, is with the gold, and I was very shocked at the way it came out. So bronzy. I really like it. And that's with the star shapes. Whoa. I just made a large asymmetrical cone. And interestingly enough, this corner right here was close to being out from underneath the edge of the foil and so it's taken on a really ruby color where it got a little too hot and then this one was the silver mixed dupes it came out a very almost marble look like the stone marble <laughs> and another uh, Just bead, elliptical bead. So those were with the mixatives, the alcohol mixatives. Oh, as well as this one was, which also um, uh, darkened a little bit in the oven. This is with those hearts and the pearl mixative. Really turned out pretty, but I was just surprised at how dark it was. So I'm going to try another one of those with nothing in it and uh, see what happens. With, with no alcohol mix, it's just with hearts. So I made a heart, a cabochon, and again a uh, bead, focal bead. So that's with the mixatives, the gold foil, the red foil. And then these are the ones that I showed previously. Oh, I might have showed them unfinished, though. So this is them finished. This is the Meadow um, Alcohol Ink. And the bead and the cabochon I thought it showed a while ago. This is the current. Back on camera. Really rich, rich, beautiful color. Cabochon. The focal bead. And this is the slate. It's amazing how similar the slate and the silver mixative comes out. Yeah. Maybe side by side, not so similar. focal bead and on this one I actually made two capuchons alright so there's those that is what the bead we just made will turn out like after quite a bit of sanding and no really and truly this um, technique gives you pretty smooth clay that doesn't require as much sanding as some of the other techniques but this is that primo and I, I will admit when working with it once you do finally get it to where it doesn't want to crumble because that's my basic problem right now it comes out very very smooth I mean almost polished looking and so it requires a lot less finishing to admittedly to uh, produce a nice piece now on this it'll be a little bit more because there is a lot of glitter protruding but this is with the this is with the Sculpey 3 and as you can see it's pretty much smooth as well just not a lot of sanding will be required to get these pieces ready to go so that is it for today if you have any questions feel free to ask me I do use um, these foam sanding blocks like that come from the hardware store to use on drywall so it's a soft foam block and as you can see I use it till it's really just ready to throw in the trash luckily this one 
I've only used this side this badly so this is my polishing one I've gotten it down to where most of the grit's gone off of it so this one's just for polishing and it'll it'll get replaced <laughs> with one of the other three Whoop. because I do use three different So this happened just this just yesterday it wasn't nearly this bad this is my me my medium grit so to speak and then this is the new one so this one's the grittiest and and as they get less gritty they get moved down the line so it does take a lot of elbow grease to uh, to polish these after they're baked uh, I won't kid you on that these new clays do make it a lot easier than when I first started and um, unless you're doing like me like I did what was that 30 <laughs> just yesterday um, and it, even myself in a normal day wouldn't uh, wouldn't probably do that many but getting ready to do this tutorial I wanted to see the uh, effects of everything I had out here before I came out and showed you so this green one will turn out very similar to the green beads that I just showed so um, this I probably will come back and show because I'm going to attempt to not overcook it this time. Let's see. Although, as you can see, it, it turned out pretty good. I used to have an oven that, if the power went off, <laughs> if the power went off while I had a piece in the oven, when the power came back on, the oven would come on to 500 degrees, as hot as it would get. So, of course, anything I had in there would burn. So I would have to rescue it while the power was off. I'd have to remember not easy <laughs> because I, I work with a timer so I stick it in there and forget it basically unless like on these transparent ones I need to go back and plunge them into ice water afterwards so like I said any questions feel free to ask me I'm sorry this was such a long video but I did feel like I had a lot that I wanted to cover um, this I'm gonna call this uh, rolled inclusion technique and it is so versatile the things that you can do um, with this technique uh, glitters spices um, other other bits of clay like I said chopped up bits of clay different glitters um, gold leafing it can go on and on um, the glass beads um, Wow let's see I've even seen people do uh, acrylic paint if you have a good, I don't want to say good cheap acrylic paint, but a good craft acrylic paint because some paints like the Lumineers will not work uh, well for this technique, but you can paint a thin, thin layer of paint and let it dry and do the same thing and get some, some neat effects with that. Uh, the Lumiere paints are so, uh, they're such a good quality paint, they're stretchy so if you try to get uh, I'll show another technique later we will get a crackle effect like on that uh, gold leaf bead if you put the gold leafing down and stretch the clay it will uh, it'll crackle so uh, you can get acrylic paint to do the same thing but the Lumiere paints won't do that because they just stretch with the clay they're so stretchy so um, okay I've rambled on enough long enough video <laughs> if y'all have any questions Feel free to ask me. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. And I'll holler at y'all later. Bye now.